The American eel is an easy fish to ignore. However, they have quite an alarming story and shouldn't be overlooked. They're a very unique fish and they will not electrocute you. <laughs> they are not a snake um, and they're super important to our ecosystem. They're born out in the Sargasso Sea and they make the migration all the way up here to fresh water. They live here for the majority of their lifespan and when they're ready to have their babies and spawn, um, they go all the way back to Bermuda to spawn there. But when they go to do that, they have to get past all these uh, turbines for hydroelectric damming. Hydroelectric dams give us power but they also alter ecosystems, making it difficult for wildlife, especially for migratory fish like the eel. The American eel was once the most abundant uh, fish in the Ottawa River. But in 2007, they were listed as endangered under the Ontario Endangered Species Act. Currently, Ontario populations are down by over 97%. Some hydroelectric producers have taken steps to help the eels, like Energy Ottawa's Shawdier Falls Migration Bypass. It's the first of its kind in Canada, and really this project is looking at, do eels choose that bypass? How do they get past that dam? Um, is that bypass helpful? Is it something that can be implemented elsewhere? Uh, so those are the kind of questions that we're looking at, and just learning more about eel behavior. The Canadian Wildlife Federation, Carleton University, and Energy Ottawa have joined together to study the effects of the bypass and other efforts to protect the eel. Carleton University students are assigned to catch, tag, and track the eels as they migrate out of the Ottawa River. They do this by first placing acoustic receivers at known passageways. They're programmed so that when uh, an eel that has an acoustic tag in it swims by, it sends out a ping and the receivers pick up this ping. So we'll know if they're using the bypass or if they're finding a different route. And the rest of the summer has been spent trying to find eels to tag. The students use a variety of methods to catch eels, but with the population in such rapid decline, tagging eels did not come easy. So we've been trap netting and electrofishing, um, and so far we've found nine eels. We're hoping for more, but they are they're tough to find. They're very elusive. <laughs> The shoreline is right here, and then you can see the opening right here, and that's where they go in. And of course, the rest of the net is on the boat right now, but um, you can imagine that there's a funnel of netting in there, and then it just opens into this box, which is, of course, flat because it's not sitting in the water right now, but in the water it has floats holding up the top of it, so it's a perfect box. To get the fish out, we open the zipper, and um, we have a, the buoy in here, uh, to prevent or to allow turtles to breathe if we get turtles um, and we can reach all the way down the length of the net to grab any fish. They ask that you record everything that you're catching and that contributes to their knowledge of the species in the river. The garfags are really cool. <laughs> They're big. You don't want to get your hands stuck in their mouth. <laughs> there were a lot of different species in the net, but no eels. The researchers check one more net at another location. Oh, we've got a turtle in here. What? We've got a turtle for sure. Oh yeah? Okay. Yeah, you can see them all. Uh, this is a map turtle. All the nets were checked and reset. Still no eels. Only one last method remains. We call it a spider anode because it's got these legs of wires. Uh, and that, so that's the anode. The hull of the boat is the cathode. And so there's an electric current that's running between them. And uh, that electric current causes the muscles in the fish to contract. So it uh, so goes up belly up. So you see the white fish belly and it's the fish is sort of attracted to the boat. And so you're, you have two people or one person at the front of the boat netting. And whenever they see that belly, they can net that fish. And the reason why uh, we electrofish at night is because eels are a lot more active at night. So at night they come out to feed. And so when we pass by with an electrofishing boat, if they are swimming out in the water, um, they will come belly up because they're, they're active. So yeah. that's why we focus our efforts um, after dark. 
After a long day and night of trapping and electrofishing, our luck finally turns around. When we find an eel of the appropriate size range, um, we're looking for a minimum of 800 millimeters long. Uh, we take it back to shore in a cooler with water and we uh, perform a surgery on it to put these transmitter in the eel. Once tagged, these eels will communicate with the acoustic receivers as they attempt to migrate back to the Sargasso Sea. Eventually, the receivers will provide crucial data about the eel's migration. From that, we can move forward and they can make modifications so that they can improve passage efficiency for these fish. We don't really know what it means to lose them, so I guess the, the best answer to that is like, we hope that we don't lose them. Um, and we're trying our best to stop that. Adult eels are being killed in large numbers. Each dam poses about a 20% mortality risk as they migrate downstream. It is estimated that around 1% of the Ontario eel population remains, and we could see extinction in our lifetime. There is good news. Some eels are successfully completing their migration journey unharmed. The data from this project will pinpoint the eel's peak migration and how and where they travel. This is necessary in order to implement an effective American eel recovery plan that will reconnect the eel's freshwater habitat to their marine spawning grounds.